Hello again and welcome to Camperland TV. You know, winter in Queensland is such a fantastic time of year. Those dry winter southwesterlies make for epic beach days, perfect for dragging in a tailor or a whiting, and of course terrific for spotting those magnificent humpback whales that move up and down the Queensland coast at this time of year. On today's show, we're heading to a place that I know you're gonna love. It's just a hop, skip and a jump across Moreton Bay. I reckon that sign up there though, may have given it away. On today's show, we're heading to North Stradbroke Island with the Jayco Jaypot in tow. We've got a massive show plan full of camping, fishing and cooking with our old mate and Stratty local Andrew Mirosh. We'll take a look at the best rigs to catch fish on and some of the best places to camp out on Stratty. But first they say that half of the fun in getting to your destination should be the journey. And there's no doubt that in my mind, a Stratty holiday starts when you leave the mainland to get on the ferry. We're on the 10.30 boat out of Brisbane this morning and there's an extra reason to smile at the moment if you're towing a van, as Amanda explains. We're heading over on a vehicle barge today and there's obviously a, a, a good association relationship with the, uh, the local Indigenous people of North Stradbroke Island because of the beautiful paintings on this boat behind us. Tell us about this vessel. Uh, so that was designed by a local artist over on the island. Um, the name of the vessel is the Mindura Bar, which is the indigenous name for North Stradbroke Island. Uh, we also have another vessel called the Kwandamuka as well, and we have the Sea Breeze. And obviously uh, you've been paying homage there with the local artists to some of the, the, the local wildlife that you'll see over here because we've got you know, a big manta ray population and lots of dolphins as well. Exactly, and whales during the winter months as well. They pass through um, and it's called the Humpback Highway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much looking forward to it. It's the right time of year for us uh, to be seeing that sort of thing. And if you've never been to North Australia, no matter, no matter where you're watching this, it certainly is a beautiful part of the southeast corner of Queensland and uh, very, very close to get to and uh, very economical at the moment because you guys have got a deal on. So at the moment we have our winter caravan and camping special. Um, so pretty much you just pay for your vehicle and you get your trailer return for free. Uh, so that's for a caravan or a camper trailer or a boat trailer. So it's a very good deal and it's also not very crowded on the island. So you can book online or over the phone as well. Fantastic. Well, there was a premier here in Queensland back in the 1970s called J.B. Occhi Pedersen who wanted to put a bridge between Cleveland and North Stradbroke. What a disgraceful thought. Thank goodness Sealink are here looking after us and getting us over to this little bit of paradise. Thanks very much for the trip today. We're looking forward to it. No worries. I reckon the holiday starts when you get on board the ferry, I reckon too. Yeah. Let's go. With a deal like that, it's no surprise that people are making the most of an opportunity to take up their own Stratty adventure. Take a look at this. Amazing what a lick of paint will do. Sealink have obviously spent a little bit of money on restoring the Minjira Bar. It's uh, looking pristine, almost as pristine as Morton Bay itself. Once off the boat, we make our way through Dunwich and east across the island towards Adda Rock. The J-Pod is the perfect van for a quick sojourn like this. Light and agile, but with all of the creature comforts in tow. I could have very easily taken the J-Pod down the eastern beach to any number of beachside campsites, but today we've opted for Adda Rock Campground. And with a view like this, it's easy to see why. Time to set up the J-Pod, and for a little van, it sure does pack a punch. Outdoor kitchen and fridge, awning, front storage box, tunnel boot, solar and off-road suspension. And inside, there's plenty of storage under the bed. The J-Pod is perfect for couples or individuals who like a last-minute getaway and prefer to travel fast and light. Before leaving Brisbane Camperland this morning, I may have considered that the J-Pod wasn't the right caravan for me. But I can tell you, in a very short space of time, my opinion on this thing has changed dramatically. Firstly, it's super easy to tow, it's lightweight. This is the off-road version and it will take you anywhere. And you know, when we think about this caravan life that we all consider, um, you know, when we retire, we want to hit the road, we want to unbridle ourselves from our worldly possessions and get mobile. <laughs> The thought now of a large caravan full of stuff is weighing me down mentally when everything that I need is right here. I've got a fridge, I've got a bed, I've got plenty of storage, I've got a kitchen, I've got an outdoor shower, I've got this view. 
maybe the J-Pod is the right thing for me. Adarok is one of a number of northern end campsites on Stratty that provide great protection from the prevailing southeasterly trade winds. It's nicely appointed with camp kitchens and other amenities, but the star of the show is in no doubt. It's definitely the beach. The other star of Stratty might be this bloke, Andrew Mirosh, who's come down to make sure that I'm squared away and ready for a couple of big days ahead. Hey, how are you? This looks a bit comfortable. Oh, here he is. Fancy seeing you here. The unofficial mayor of North Stradbroke Island. Oh, don't, don't give me that title. <laughs> hey, what do you think of this? It's perfect little thing for me to do my stuff overnight on the beach. Fishing, I can fit one of the kids in, have a fish at night, get a bit cold, cook up a feed, a few cold cans and straight to bed. Well, guess what? You're not staying in it. It's mine, <laughs> it's mine for the weekend. But um, no, mate, it's got everything on it that opens and shuts. And what about this location? This this out of rock, in fact, all of these campsites along the the northern end of North Stratty are brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, well, as you know, I love Stratty. Stratty's really my my place to come, and I'd like to be here all the time, but I can't at the moment. When did you first come to North Stradbroke Island? Uh, my grandmother had a house in 1963 that she, she bought at Point Lookout, and um, it was sold out of our family in 77, and I bought it back in 89. Same house, so I've still got it, and it's it's there forever. Wow. Love the love shack. And are we going to uh, do a bit of cooking up there today? Yeah, I think so. We might do a bit of cooking and have a couple of coldies, and, uh, Try a bit of Stratty lifestyle. Sounds all right. A bit of uh, cooking with Andrew Mirosh, a bit of fishing, yeah. and uh, obviously a bit of camping. And this sounds like the perfect weekend. Okay, so now we're in this bloke's capable hands. The rest should be relatively easy. Our plan is pretty simple catch a few fish and then go and cook some dinner. Let's see how we go. Stradbroke Island has for many years been considered a great place to whale watch. It's the right time of year to see them, and on the drive down the beach, well, we don't have to look far. Whale numbers have exploded in recent years. It wasn't all that long ago that they'd been almost hunted into extinction, but they've come back in a big way. It's thought up to 50,000 migrate up the eastern seaboard annually, right past the aptly named Point Lookout. As we make our way south towards Jumpin' Pin, Andrew keeps a close eye on the falling tide, the seabirds working the bait fish, and the gutters developing close to shore. We're on the hunt for Taylor, also prevalent in the winter months, and fingers crossed, this is the spot. So if the weather was better, you'd be able to see the high rises of the Gold Coast over my right hand shoulder. Because we're down at Jumpin' Pin Bar, one of Andrew's favourite fishing spots. And he's a tailor fishing expert, this bloke, so fingers crossed we might land something. Tell me a little bit, a couple of tips and tricks for for, cat, for landing a tailor. What do you need to know? Uh, good bait. Right. Um, pilchers are pretty good. I prefer seagull. If you can get seagull, you seem to get a bigger class of fish on them. Um, you look for a, a back bank with an entry so the tailor can come and go and chase bait and things. And, Usually morning and night are the best, but overcast days are pretty good too. We've got some birds working out there, is that a yeah, good sign? That's a good sign, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. I can't cast quite that far, but <laughs> we'll give it a go. So the hooks I'm using, they're just a mustard hook. I use it for Spanish mackerel as well, but I didn't know what pattern they are, but they're a very short hook and a very sharp hook, and they sit really well in a little gar when I use small gar. So I always break the nose off, and discard the bill. I reckon it's bad luck, I'm a bit superstitious, so I never have a guard bill in the boat. I don't know why, it doesn't help. Okay, so measure your bait straight through the backbone. One, two, three. You want to finish in the eye or the head where it's hard. Go for the eye. And that's the bait, you should be able to cast that for, leave it out there all day, it'll still be there. Pilch it'll fall off really easy, but they love these little things. It's this attention to detail, they say, that lands 10% of the fishermen, 90% of the fish. And it seems to be working out that way for us today, as Andrew hooks up on his first cast. There you go, a strutty tailor. He's not a big one, he's probably about a kilo, but perfect eating size, and I just love him. You see he's starting to go green on the back, but he's not a green back yet. He never will, because I'm gonna eat him. <laughs> now this is, the fish that people, you know, spend endless hours 
on these uh, sand islands trying to catch over. This yeah. time of year, come the winter months, they're yeah. around, aren't they? And Fraser a bit later. Yeah. July, August, September. And so they school up and they, 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 they're they obviously ferocious eaters. They yeah. eat the bait, do they? Yeah. They run up and down these little gutters, holes, and they eat everything from dart to little pilchards to anything that moves, they'll eat. So. Well, there you go. We came and you delivered. Yeah, thank you. Pretty soon, I too am in on the act. Taylor travel in big schools, so when you find one, there's usually a few around. How quickly can you get bitten off? I can see that. Yeah, yeah. That's that. Well, look at his teeth. That leader's just gone through his through through his mouth on the beach bitten and bitten me straight off. Look at that. Interesting about that. They always say that the the bite is so light with the Taylor, isn't can it? Be. Yeah, can be. Um, and then I didn't even know I had him on. He must have. Been, he was swimming towards the. Um, that's one of your talents, mate. Swimming, <laughs> swimming towards towards the beach with me. And it wasn't until he jumped that Andrew said, you've got a fish on. I mean, you know things are going really well when even the cameraman is catching a fish. Well, I think he's outfished us. Well, what do you got here, mate? It's a tailor, right? <laughs> <laughs> With a few in the esky and a few left for another day, we decide to head back up the beach to Andrew's house for a quick lesson on how to prepare and cook fresh straddy tailor, courtesy of our good mate, Grower Fisher Chef, Andrew Miroche. If you've ever wondered what my backyard looks like at Struddy, welcome to it, now you know. So we've just got back down from Main Beach and we've had a pretty successful little session. So I always use a butter knife to scale tailor, otherwise I find if you use a big scale as it bruises the flesh really badly. So just towards the head, make sure you get the knuckle there. I hate eating scales. Right. They scale really easily. They're a really easy fish to deal with. This fish I've bled, so that removes a lot of the red meat and the darker meat from the tailor. They're a beautiful fish eaten fresh. I don't love them after they've been frozen for a long time, but fresh, I reckon they're pretty hard to beat. Especially fresh from the beach over here. Right, we'll get rid of all the scales. Yep, this is a real fisherman's backyard. You can see there's been quite a few fish caught here the last few days and, and my wife's been away so I'm going to be picking a lot of scales up before she turns up tonight. She'll never ever know. Okay, sharp knife. Cut under the fin. I'll make a cut at the tail like that and then just follow the backbone up with your knife. Ideally these fish would be better left in a slurry for four or five hours to firm up but yeah, we're hungry so we're going to eat them right now. Beautiful fillet. Same again on the other side. Try to get all the way up to the head too because there's quite a bit of meat in that section. A nice thick fillet as well. That's a pretty good job. Not much, not much left on that at all. So just double check, make sure there are no fins. The fins contain bones. So I'm just gonna nick that fin and bone out. There's a line of bones here along this lateral line called the pin bone. So you can feel them with your finger. All you do to make a boneless fillet is cut down each side of that lateral line. You got a boneless piece of fresh straddy tailor ready for the pan. So a beautiful fish like freshly harvested local straddy tailor deserves to be treated simply. This is about as simple as you get. Plain flour, pink sea salt, some lemon pepper. Really, really easy. Straight into a plastic bag. Give it all a good, good shake to get all those flavours through. It's a nice mix. Straight in with our tailor fillets. I'll just do a couple of little ones. Seal your bag up. Give it a nice shake. Then I cook it in a pan in the kitchen with a little bit of fresh rosemary in the pan with a bit of olive oil. Then I'll finish it with some other secret bits and, bits and pieces. That's it. So to finish our sauce, just some butter, straight in the hot pan, juice of half a lemon, some of my favourite things with fish, capers. A couple of the pan. You can never have too many capers, they have that salty, briny, beautiful taste to your sauce. Now we'll just serve it on a plate. Keep all your rosemary, that adds a bit of extra flavour and garnish and whatever else you need. All your beautiful sauces and the little bit of burnt bits and the fish stock straight on top of your fish. 
bit of lemon for garnish. There you go. Well, you're never far away from a feed, are you? Speechless. It's pretty good, isn't it? That is absolutely beautiful. And simple, like a recipe that took two and a half minutes to put together and cook and out of ingredients we got in the cupboard. Fish doesn't come fresher than that. And no, it doesn't. Just thinking about your idyllic lifestyle over here. You've been over here for a couple of weeks now. Cast a line in the morning, mm -hmm. a bit of that in the afternoon, cold beer. Go for a walk, go for a wander, go for a drive. What could be better? Nothing could be better than that. No, she could. What a day it's been. And to think that I left Brisbane this morning with the J-Pod under tow, I crossed the bay, I set up camp, I caught up with Andrew, we went fishing, I caught a fish, we cooked fish, and then ended up with a feed fit for a king. There is no doubting that this caravanning life will take you places. For bookings and info on heading to Stradbroke Island, head to sealink.com.au. Minjerabarcamping.com.au is the place to go to secure your site at all Straddy locations, including at a rock campground. And you can see the Jayco J-Pod Outback in all its glory at Brisbane Camperland, Wynnum Road, Tim Galper. All go to their website. See you next time.